Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Taylor Clem. Uh, I'm Alachua County's Environmental and um, Community Horticulture Agent and Master Gardener Volunteer Coordinator with UFIFAS Extension, Alachua County. Um, and today's program, this is just part of our ongoing Master Gardener Volunteer Lecture Series program. And each month we have a couple different programs that the Master Gardener Volunteers put on on different different topics or issues or anything like that that relates to horticulture here in Alachua County, North Central Florida. So I know some people come from different parts of the state. Um, so a lot of the content is, very, some of the content is very Alachua County specific, but um, there's still a lot that can be learned throughout the entire program nonetheless. But what I'm gonna encourage everybody to do is throughout the program, feel free to shoot us any questions that you may have. At the bottom of the screen, there's a Q&A box. You can type in your question there and uh, one of the master gardeners will be able to respond uh, to that question. And then everybody will be able to see the answers and all that content and we'll share different links and everything like that through there. Um, so um, so in order to get those questions to us, feel free to put them in the Q&A. If you put it in the chat box, we end up losing it very quickly um, because they just scroll up regularly or very quickly. But anyways, um, so put all your questions in the Q&A. And again, I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, today. Um, so this week's or tonight's program, we have uh, Susan Lucas. She's one of our Master Gardener volunteers in Alachua County. And she uh, she has a great collection of palms and a very uh, keen interest in growing palms in her landscape. So we know that everyone's wanting to learn about how do we properly grow and maintain and manage different palms. So Susan is going to be one of the best speakers that we have in our volunteer group to uh, speak on this topic. So Susan, okay. I'd like... <laughs> so Susan I'd like to hand it over to you and uh, thank you uh, very much for taking the time to do this presentation for us. Okay well as Susan Lucas and I am um, I've been involved with uh, with palms and kind of got my interest spurred when I was in it when we bought a big piece of property in Newberry that you know, had lots of room and lots of opportunities to try different things. And so that was about in 2006. So most of the landscaping, some of the pictures I'm gonna be showing you are about 14, 15 years old. And um, one thing that, in, that, well, and I'll start my slideshow with the fact that I came to Alachua or North Florida from Northern California about 20 years ago. And I loved hybrid roses, um, but I didn't really work at having them. They just, in North, Northern California, San Rosa, Sonoma County, I don't know if you've ever been to wineries, but the roses are amazing. And so you put them in this rocky, terrible looking soil and they look like that picture. And um, so I moved to Florida where Virginia Creeper was the one that went crazy and grew everywhere. And so I decided that wasn't gonna be my favorite plant and I wasn't gonna do the roses anymore. So I decided that maybe I would learn more about, about especially some of the native um, palms. Now, you may have questions I can't answer because there are like 2,500 different varieties of palms all over. And um, some of them will grow in our area, some of them are marginal and some of them just won't, some of them are natives. So I, I, we're going to go through a few so that you can maybe get an idea of how to put some of these fun plants in your landscaping, um, integrate it with other things you're growing, and so you don't just have to plant, you know, one sable palm and say, now I've got a palm tree, I think you can have fun with them. So here we go. Hope I don't mess up this rolling thing. There we go. First of all, and this isn't going to be a botany class because that's what that would take a long time in itself. Palms are really not the trees that most of us think of as trees. They're a monocot family. Um, when you see a, a palm tree sprout, it looks like a blade of grass and it continues from there. It, it has, it doesn't have the vascular cambrium. So the, it doesn't have the, the, the inside of the palm is the part, the meristem is the most important part of the palm. 
and that's where that's where you want to watch for damage or any disease or or either being it from a bug or from a um, or or from a uh, organism that that would damage the palm. And the University of Florida IFAS website is a great resource for anything you want to know about how palms grow. But basically, they're a bundle of tubes, and um, you have to be careful of the center of them. Is this volume okay? Are we okay? Okay. Um, so my philosophy with all the gardening that I do is it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be rewarding and I want you to have success with it. And so um, I'm going to be showing you a lot of areas around town in the Alach Alachua County, as well as my own property, um, because I want, I want you to see how you can, you can um, why, how and why you might want to put these, pl these plants in your landscape. And I, um, let me try, sorry, let me fix it, wrong way. This won't keep happening guys, I'll get this way. Okay, so this, this um, on the left hand side is a butterfly garden, Alachua account, this is Newberry. Um, I, I had pool equipment and so I wanted to put, I, this is a, a, a sable miner, a Louisiana sable miner. And I never had really had one close up where I could see it, see the, uh, the flowers, the, effer the effer efferents. Um, and they are incredible attractors of bees. And, and both the, the, all the different varieties, I had a lot of native bees and that was pretty fun. Um, I did wanna, because there's a lot of master gardeners watching, the, uh, the little blue flowers that look like Ruelia over here, which we all say is a problem. Um, they are Ruellia, but they're, a, they're actually a variety that was developed at UF that's sterile. And so I put it in about five years ago and um, it, it only grows vegetatively. You can kind of shorten it up when you need to, come in when it comes up, but it's not coming up all over the yard. It's great. So we have to watch for that. But now we're back to palms. Now, the other, with the, um, other picture on the left hand side, those are windmill palms and there's oak trees in the background and you can see that the windmills are a little bit shaded. And so they, which they like, there's another laurel oak, just this is the Southern exposure and there's another laurel oak to the South. And, um, and, it, and it adds a lot of different, different types of different types of plants. You have the camellias and kuntis and oak trees and that's kind of fun. Um, the volume and the texture that I love about the palms is obviously I'm kind of, I kind of like the spiky look with plants, but th these are Louisiana sable miners. They've probably been there 10 years and they are about eight feet tall and they're about as tall as they want to be. Um, no trimming except for a few brown fronds as life goes on with them. And they are blocking, they're blocking a busy, busy road out to the west of them. But they're still airy enough that you can kind of see through them and they flutter in the wind. And that's a fun way to do. You can use a palm, you know, as a, as a hedge, as a hedge. The, the other picture on the left is a, sorry, right, am I looking at it? This is, um, these are also um, Louisiana sable miners in town. Um, a little more shade, they're a little greener. Um, where they tend to be a, they tend to want to be a little bit of a blue green, and and this is this is blocking a two story house on a busy road. Also about no, this is older. This is maybe a twenty year installation, and the bamboo in the back is a clumping variety called the gracilis, and it grows pretty much upright and combined with the. I think it's really pretty combined with the with the palm. Okay. They also can, can provide a habitat and food for, the, for wildlife. I, the squirrels and the birds love them. Um, uh, not everybody loves squirrels, but I think they're fun to have. And this is actually, this is actually on, a, um, on a palmetto, on a green um, palmetto. And those, uh, they're flat, the bees love the flowers. 
Um, and then speaking of the animals loving them, the birds take them, the squirrels take them, and then they, in nature, this is where you oftentimes see a, a palm growing is right at the base of a big tree. This is the base of a, of a live oak, but it's, it was just dropped by a bird or a, um, it was, there was not another tree really close to it. It was just dropped by a bird or a squirrel, and that's how they plant them. Um, and then they also can add a lot of, of color variation. This is a, a, a blue palmetto and um, we'll, it's gonna cover the, a little bit more about it later, but a lot of the colors of the palms are, will be the blue gray and that's really pretty. So we're gonna start with the natives. Um, the sable palm is the state tree in Florida and people call it a cabbage palm in this country, this area, they're not grown for their, um, their hearts, which actually in Brazil, they farm them and kill the palm by getting this uh, delicacy out. They eat the top, or you can eat the top of the palm. But in, they, in, this, in the Florida, they're usually taken from the wild. And um, because they grow pro prolifically in all of the different forests, but there actually are starting to grow some in nursery settings and um, transplanting them smaller and putting them in pots. And, and you, you will see them around town in some of the, um, some of the nurseries are starting to grow sables um, rather than just getting them from the wild. They're cold hardy. They're very drought tolerant when they're um, established and um, they provide shade and they want to be about they want to be about 40 feet tall but they grow very slow and so they can be in a lot of different yards Susan, um i a question popped up and uh -huh. um you you were talking about the 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 palm hearts and uh, -huh. uh I saw it in the, the comments and talking about how people eat them. Uh, people in Florida will eat the cabbage palm hearts and they mm -hmm. call it swamp cabbage because they okay. take it and they cook it and they all stew it up and it takes forever, but, but not many people do it and we don't recommend doing it because like you said, it kills the entire tree. So, does, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't recommend well, doing yeah, it. The, the it's hearts of palm that you yeah. see in, in cans. That's a lot of that. It, I, apparently, it's grown in Brazil, and they and it's a delicacy. But I hate to see it a whole big tree like that. <laughs> I I completely agree. I don't recommend doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't know it was called swamp cabbage. Okay. Yeah, swamp ca cabbage. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, uh, the bees. The one thing the the uh, the sable palm. Um, Ha, the, the efflorescence and the sable palm is prolific. They have a lot of flowers. Bees love them. I've had just swarming, I hope they're honey honeybees that have been up, up in some of ours. And, um, but you, and you can, once the flowers are gone, you can cut off those, um, those stalks before they drop all their, um, all the little particles that just make kind of a mess. Um, one little sidebar is that most palm trees want to be, and I'm going to show you some pictures of ones that are ready to have some leaves trimmed. Um, when palms, when the older palms, palm leaves start to start to die, which they do, they reabsorb the nutrients from the from the leaf into the palm tree. So if you if you severely if you severely trim a palm, um, you can you can dam you you can damage the uh, the nutrition in the palm, and um, of course some some trimming is going to be necessary because you don't you know you don't want you don't want to leave a lot of brown ones on there. But when but if you can wait until they turn brown, that's the best time to, to trim a palm. Um, it is good to you don't want to leave them forever though because then they can actually become. I want to get side sidetracked, but that you can get rodents living in palms that are never trimmed, and that's not fun. Okay, so these are some sable palms that were put in um, to, these, are, these were planted maybe 14 feet off of this garage space. So, and, and they were, um, these have been in the ground about 10 years, and they, and they provide, I don't know if you can see in the picture very well, but there's camellias underneath, and they, they provide shade for the camellias, and they, um, 
and in a in a lot of a variety of shapes shape shapes and of the of the leaves and such. Uh, this one, Ty, Taylor, can can you see my pointer when I point things when I use my pointer? Okay, yeah. this kind mm -hmm. of fat guy right here. This was actually a volunteer. And I and and I, I let it grow and I have a couple other ones in the yard that I've let grow. Uh-oh, is my inter internet says it's not good. Am I okay? Yeah, we still I can still okay, uh, okay. see you. Mm -hmm. And so that that so they they can, you know, you you can you can you can uh, you can let a sable grow until you can see what kind of a tree it, what a plant it is because it looks like a stalk of grass when it starts. And and when it's small, it can be transplanted. They're not hard to transplant when they're small. Okay, there's a couple more that are um, it, that are in a driveway of uh, land and a uh, island in a driveway with grasses underneath them. Uh, this is another way to whoop, to use the sable, where you can. It's why is it doing that? Okay. Where, where it's there, these are actually um, Eastern facing on a house. And so in the afternoon, they provide shade to a pool and the pattern on the pool is really fun. And, Susan, and one of the they, questions uh, that uh -huh. came in was uh, when it was just looking at the landscape bed where you had that one volunteer palm come up, yep. you said um, some of them were like about 10 years old. About what size of palm did you put in because uh, I know some palms can go pretty can grow pretty quickly, but what size palms did did you? Oh plant? no, okay, yes, they, they, these have been in about ten years, and they were probably eight foot eight eight feet tall with their with their. So they now they're about fourteen feet, I think I would say by the way they were with the garage, and okay. so they were about eight or eight or ten. They I I don't know I haven't ever figured out you know I haven't thought of how many feet per year, but they. For as as things in Florida grow, they actually are pretty slow growing. You know, they're yeah. not. They want to be forty feet tall, but that's going to be a long. Time. Yeah, and this, it's interesting when you buy palms. Sometimes you bet you pay by the linear foot, so you mm -hmm. pay by a tight versus the container. So it really depends if they're field grown. You're paying by the, how tall it is versus right. the container. And sometimes the, some palms are 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 sold by the uh, the clear trunk, which is where you know the new the old the old growth, like up at the top here, this is a single story house and kind of a slopey pitch roof. So it's, these are probably, the angle is, they're not, they're, they're not 14. I, they're, they're probably 15 feet of clear up here where they've been, the old branch has been cut off. And these are looking like they're, these are about ready to be, to be, um, to be cut off. When they're almost all brown, they're not going to hurt the tree to uh, cut them down, cut it off. Um, now these guys, and I'm going to repeat some of this as I go, but it's kind of a kind of a common theme. You know, they have to be a the the palm the palm trees any plant needs to have enough room to grow so the air can circulate around it. You're going to have more trouble with um, disease if they're too close. Um, and then you know you want them to be able to grow to the size that they want to be. So you're not worried about um, trimming them. And as palms go, you can't really make them shorter. You know, that's not the way you can do it. Um, the trees were watered regularly when they were first planted. You know, they're very drought tolerant once they get, most of them are very drought, drought tolerant before they get, once they get established. You know, we talked about not over trimming them, planting them where there's a lot of different colors. And then um, one thing that, that is, Palms are very particular about getting the minor nutrients. And so these, these are fertilized, but most of them do really well with a time release, you know, no phosphorus product with miners. And the miners are, with, you can find fertilizers that talk about tropical miners and, um, or just miners. And that would be uh, nutrients like a boron, iron, magnesium, manganese. I don't know. I don't have a label in front of me, but those are those. Those are the ones that that um, palm trees need. And um, and then you just watch them for pests and disease. But it's usually 
a nutrition or cultural problem that, that most of these plants have trouble with. Culture being, you know, the water, the spacing, and then the food. I, the, I, we fertilize in um, February in, and then again in June. And, um, and, uh, and not a ton of fertilizer, but we do, but they, but regularly. And a little sidebar about the irrigation. When you plant a palm tree, you can easily just hook it into your existing drip irrigation with what I call spaghetti, you know, it's just a really thin line and an emitter and um, put it on your irrigation schedule especially the first six or eight months that the plant that they're planted they'll do well and then when it's when you're when they're established you can just cap off that drip irrigation and they'll be happy okay so these are the these i'm going to talk about some of the natives that i think a lot of people don't think about putting in their yards and when you see some of the pictures, you're going to say, whoa, I think, I think this would be fun. So the, <laughs> the sable miners are in the same family as the sable, tree, the sable palm that we, that we think of, that's the state tree. And um, they're sometimes called dwarf palmettos. The, the Louisiana is certainly not a dwarf plant, but it's not as big as its cousin, the sable, the sable palm that we were just talking about. And then there's another one that's not really as well you don't see it. You don't see it around as much, but I. But there. But there are some resources for it, and it's called a, a blue stem, and it and it is definitely a true dwarf, and it's fun to play with. The 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 Serenoa rupens, which is what the family is of the saw palmettos, are what a lot of people see out in the forest, and they can be green or silver, or blue. People call them blue or silver. Um, they're super cold hardy and they're slow growing. And when you first look at them, you would think, oh, you know, they're the same, the same plant. But but they are different. Here, find out their roots. Okay, now this is like information that you need for the next cocktail party because nobody knows all this. This is the saw palmetto, and you can see how the, the fronds talk. Get, get, get go on to the pineal as just a cluster with just with no real shape they're all tightly tightly bundled on there and there's two rows of barbs on the on the uh, the pineal of the of the saw palmetto so when you walk by them and that's how they got their name you know they're sharp the sable liner always looks like this nice triangle when you or uh, arrow, you know, when you look at it, it and also the sable palm tree, uh, the fronds are attached similarly, and there's no barbs. They're smooth and um, not too difficult to deal with in the landscape. So the the same, they're you know they're very similar, but they are a little different. The sable miner is is really cold tolerant. It wants to be seven to 10 feet tall and the blue stem is smaller. This kind of interesting, you know, they're, they're, trunk, they're trunkless. They, they grow in, in a, more like a shrub habit. And, um, and, and unlike some other palms, they do grow an underground taproot. And that taproot can be really long. And um, so once they're established, they don't transplant very well. So if you're gonna buy them, you usually see a sable miner has been grown in a um, from seed in a pot, and then maybe it's a five or a seven, fifteen gallon pot that you would put in the ground to to start to start your uh, to start the sable. Um, and we talked about it; they're not they're not armed with any um, with any with any uh, thorns. The saw palmetto. Um, can is different in that it can it can get up to 10 feet tall if it's in the right environment. It, usually it doesn't get that big, but it also grows wide. It it grows it'll grow, it'll develop a stock, a stock just like the taproot that's underneath it. And um, we'll see some pictures of that. It, it's the host plant for a, for the palmetto skipper and the monk butterfly, and it um, 
and it's berries are collected for a wide variety of different reasons. Um, matter of fact, people have, you know, have to kind of watch for people coming into their property to get the berries. Um, I don't, I've never used them for anything, but um, they are they are something that people collect and then they're sell them, use them for different medicines. Um, so so this is this is a, a hedge. I showed you a picture of it, a little different picture of it, of the sable miner, um, the Louisiana sable miner, and then this is a this is a in town, and this is the blue stem, and this these these palmettos have been here. These my, sable miners have been here for probably twelve years, and um, they did start out as like two fronds each, they're very slow growing, but they're gonna stay small. So we, so these are never gonna, never gonna grow into the, the much larger plant that the um, palmettos can be. Um, Susan, we had a couple of questions uh, pop up about the tap roots. Can you clarify what a tap root is? Um, well, well, the um, most, most of the palms that I'm familiar with, and it, they they will they grow, um, they don't have a very big root, root ball, and they um, they they don't send. I guess that the sable miners um, and the palmettos, it's a it's a long underground root. Um, not I, maybe you can help me with this botany wise, um, where a tree spreads out roots in all directions. Um, only has a tap root when it's young, right? Am I right? Not Generally? always. Yeah. <laughs> Not always. Okay. <laughs> well, well, they, but but the, but these guys do do have a once they're established, they'll have a long tap root. And so, if you were to cut that and try to transplant them, they won't do well. They, they, that's basically um, if you're going to transplant a sable miner um, or a palmetto, you want to do it when they're younger. And when they collect it, some of the palmettos are collected out of um, forest type situations and they're usually just really small when they do that. Does that help? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, th this is, this is the, uh, the silver palmetto. Um, also a, 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 an older, an older one it has never had irrigation. It's, it's, it's an under, these are understory tr plants in nature. And so it's underneath a big laurel oak. Um, and then it's got a, a laurel pedalum behind it, but um, it's covering up a pump house and um, is just doing beautifully. That's, there's two of them. Why one is shorter, I don't know, got me. Um, this, other, this other spot where the palmetto, th these are um, saw palmettos, the green ones, are, are working as a as a hedge between two houses in a neighborhood in in downtown Gainesville, and um, I think from talking to the homeowner there, because I just stopped to see if I could take a picture. I didn't want to take a picture without permission, and they said they'd been there about 20 years, and so they're not terribly large. And this is the same the same plant, and you can see how the stalks, and you can see how the stalks coming out from the bottom where they started are coming out and then laying down along the ground and then coming up again. And so, so they will get wider as well as taller as they're older. But you can still like see light through them. It's, it's kind of a fun way to do, to do a, a privacy fence. And then there's always times when you say, what was I thinking? And this is, um, this is my house. And I thought I planted this guy, this is another silver saw, it with quite a bit of room, like maybe eight feet off. This is where the center of the plant is. But um, it's, this is a Western facing bathroom window. I was okay that I had a little bit of vegetation in front of the window. But so next year I'm gonna trim off one side of it and see if it's gonna be able to be able to stay there and not be too close to the house. But, um, but they, you know, they, the palmettos will grow wider and taller where you're going to see the sable miners getting more, um, more like a bush and taller, but not so much bigger, wider, sorry. 
So here we are again, the right place, the right plant, you know, let them grow where they want to be. They like to have a little shade. And so if you've got an area that's shade, and even shady shade, they'll grow. Um, they, they'll grow maybe a little slower and they're fed with the time release fertilizer. Um, these plants, and like a lot of palms, a lot of plants, you don't want to plant them too deep. They, um, you want to plant them at the same level that they've been growing. That they, that can be the demise of a palm. And then um, they generally are pretty low maintenance because all you do is trim off the spent fronds. Okay. This is another, um, the, the Raptophyllum hystrix is the needle palm. And they, they're a native in the area and they're gorgeous. And you don't see them very, in very many retail situations, but you will because people are starting to ask about them more. They're, they're really dark, dark green. Um, they're multi-stem, they don't get a trunk. Uh, they have a little bit of a, of a powdery silver underside. So you, when you first see them, you think, oh, is there something wrong? And no, there isn't. They just like to be that, that's, that's the way they are. Super, they're up one of the, one of the uh, most cold, cold hardy palms and they're natives. Super slow growing. So even if you add one to a smaller garden, it wants to be, you know, six feet tall, but it's going to be a lot of years. And um, they need some moisture when they're first planted. The reason they're called needle palms though, is that they have very, very sharp, maybe four to six inch uh, spines that grow vertically around the base. And someone told me once that you, they would be a good security border. That would be awful. <laughs> Think of somebody walking through there by accident, or maybe it would be a security border. But they, um, and you can you can ask ask at some of the ind more the independent nurseries in the area, um, be because they're slow growing. Not a lot of uh, nurseries grow them, but more are, and um, they're endangered in the wild. You're not supposed to find a creek and dig them up. Don't know what the exact rules are on that, but they, but they are um, endangered in the wild. And um, they, they are related, if you can tell by the botanical name, they're related to the um, lady palm. And so th if you see this, you know, I, you might just think it's a big lady palm and, but because the leaves are very similar. And, um, this is like a, a palm that's been there 10 years and it's probably six, uh, five feet tall and um, super dark green. I, my photography isn't as good as I wish it was, but, it, but they are a, a really fun uh, palm to add to, your, add to your collection. And I might be able to hook you up with where you can find them if we talk about them. This is one that, this is a different one, same yard, but this different one that's got, that you can see the, the, the dark green with the shade. And they like a little shade. So th these are the, I'm gonna talk a, about some other ones that are, we call them cold hardy palms. And that's why we, we they grow so well, Northern Florida. Um, because I had to stop somewhere with the number with the different kinds of palms, but the European fan palm or, or, or Chaparops humilis is the only palm that's native in Europe. And in the when I've traveled, I haven't traveled there as much as I wish I had, but um, they are they're widely used in landscapes in Europe. And um, it's cold hardy. They're multi trunk usually, but they can be single trunk. I've got some pictures of both. Um, they, they can grow in the ground as a large, large specimen, drought tolerant when they're established. They can be grown in the shade. Usually see them in sunny locations, but they, um, they grow longer fronds and they grow slower in the shade. Um, but they, they do are, they're heavily armed. And so you've got to be careful um, what, you know, when you're trimming them. I just use rose gloves and glasses. <laughs> Safety goggles, you know, but um, they, uh, I, I think that they're, they can make a really nice main event um, if you're looking for a, a something different to put in a, in a, in a situation. This is, a, these are, this is kind of a new spot 
this isn't my yard. These are these are ones around town. Um, uh, it's going to be hiding a pump house. You know, in five or eight years, it'll be maybe up to halfway up the roof. Um, this is one, an entryway. This is a single European fan palm. And, um, and this is the, obviously the, the multi-trunked. It, it seems like with our experience with the Euros, is it, that it, it may be something hereditary. The single trunked ones just seem to start out that way and continue. Um, they can be, uh, they, they, you know, they do sometimes get some suckers at the bottom, especially the multi trunks, and you can you can just trim those with the yearly trimming. And these are ones at an entryway at a at a at a uh, development, in a multi trunk and two singles. Kind of pretty. Success comes with another, you know, I, we talked about um, keeping them, letting them have enough room. Um, one little sidebar is that euros sometimes get um, sooty mold. Um, maybe it's the shape of the fronds or in the shade that they give themselves. But if you look kind of like a crepe myrtle, we'll sometimes get that. Usually it's because we get ants sometimes feeding on aphids and scale, overhead watering. You know, all those, if you break the scale, if you break the cycle, they'll do much better. Um, Anytime you see ants crawling on a tree, it's usually because there's something up there they want. And a lot of times it's a, it's a pest. You look a little closer and you know you take care of that one and they'll, they'll, it'll all be better. Um, this is the, 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 I call it the darling because it, they're very, very popular and they're beautiful, um, but with our warming trends, the windmill palms, the Trachycarpus fortunae, are getting to be a little harder to keep happy. Um, they, uh, they, they're a beautiful little tree. Big, well, they don't get super, super giant. They, they have the fibers on the, they, they leave, when the, when the fronds die back, they leave a fibrous coating on the trunk. They're real fluttery in the wind, which have got them their nickname of windmill. And, uh, they grow a little faster and they have no spines. But so what we, I, what I would recommend is if you want to have windmills and I have them in my yard and most of them have been doing well, is that um, I give them a granular uh, fungicide in the spring. And um, it's, it's not, uh, it's best to give them the fungicide when you're not fertilizing. So this would be in between your fertilizing cycles. And, um, because the fertilizer lowers the pH of, of the soil, what, you know, immediate around where you, where you put it, and, and the fungicide like, doesn't like the, the lower pH. It breaks it down more quickly. So a granular fungicide worked into the soil just to give yourself a little insurance, I think. You know, so. um, and they don't like to be left to, they don't like to be real wet. Um, they were, they were, you know, they're native in China and Japan where it's rocky and colder. So they, um, they'd rather, they'd rather be on the dry side than wet. And they, um, they're, I would, you know, it'd be fun to see something moving, but they do flutter in the wind. And um, this one uh, gets a little shade in the afternoon and um, is a pretty happy, happy camper and you can see the stock on it. Um, this is more of my collection, um, but these are, these are both windmills. This is a double, like two windmills that are growing together. The, seed, the seeds were, the, when they were growing you know, from seed, they, they just put two seeds in a pot and let them grow together. This is a Louisiana uh, miner. That, was, that had a little problem and then it, I cut off the part that wasn't doing well, it's coming back nicely. And then this is a Euro over here in the, on the side. And uh, they can be both, you know, they can be both the star attraction or, or, part of a, or part of a group. These guys are, I showed you a picture earlier about the, the, the uh, varieties, but um, 
here they are growing with the big camellia and happy. Um, the last one of the, uh, the cold hardies that I wanted to talk about is a pindo palm, which is a, which is a big, it's a, bute or it's a butea, people call them pindos. They, um, they're native in Brazil and Uruguay, so, and they, and they will grow there, but they, you think of Brazil as being, being warm, but it's cold, they, you know, it's, they have, it's cold. And they have, and they are, grow they're grown, they're, they're very cold hardy and have beautiful fronds that are, that are um, in a, a pinnate, the pinnate style, which is the long frond with like, more like a coconut palm. Um, and the, the fruit that they produce, I've got a picture of it here coming up, um, and I'll uh, just go there. And then the fruit they produce um, can be used for jellies. Uh, wildlife loves them. And um, they have a big seed inside. And when they're ripe, they're almost like a persimmon kind of texture, uh, kind of a gooey. And I don't have a recipe for it, but they're, you know, they're, uh, there, 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 there's recipes online for making, making the jellies out of them. This is an example of a pindo and you can see this one. I tried to get one that had, they don't all grow with this curve, which I call the whir whirling. They don't all want to do that, but this one does. And it, I think it's, it's really a pretty tree. It's a kind of a blue gray fronds. These are some that are being used actually as a privacy fence. And they, um, they, this particular installation is a pretty rustic trimming of the, of the, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, trunk. Um, they, they're, they're, they can be done in a really artistic, beautiful pattern if you want them to be look more, um, arch, you know, like more, more artsy. And if you've ever in uh, the Mer uh, Myrtle Beach area up up north has got some beautiful pindos that that have the sculptural cutting of the of the of the spent leaves this is the Susan, double that, um we had a question oh, come in uh one yeah. of the palms it was just for clarification uh yeah. you had a i guess it was two slides ago but it was what palm did you have next to a camellia was that a windmill palm oh that was a windmill yep okay thank you yep yep this is a windmill you can see that the you know, kind of furry bark and um and the big the big wide leaves yep yep that's a windmill and that that's a pretty big one there it's not going to want to get too much bigger than that but but will okay so um Hoping that I, you know, spurred your interest for things to try, but my suggestions, like I said, are just that. Um, adding some different things to your gardens are always kind of fun. Um, there are a few palms that I think people are going to have questions about that are not natives and are not what we, we call particularly cold hardy, but um, I wanted to touch on them and I've got some pictures just so we can, you know, and if people have any questions, I, I can try to answer questions. The Mexican fan palm is um, one that is sometimes, it, it wants to be very, very tall. And, um, and when it gets to be that big, it can be the, the maintenance issues of trimming the fronds, which come down weighing, you know, 50 pounds when they're old, uh, can be an issue. Um, the Phoenix Sylvester is one that, you know, we used to say, you know, oh, experiment with it because it, oh, if we get a cold winter, it'll be a goner. It, it doesn't, it, it really does come back from most cold. Well, if we have a really cold winter, it'll, it'll might be a little shocky for a couple of years, but it will come back. Um, super, super um, long spine, long, sharp spines. It, you, you probably um, need help trimming these because they can be, they, those can be dangerous. The Canary Island date palm is another one that's being brought into the area with our little bit warmer climates that we're having in protected areas, especially in town or next to a building. I mean, they're gorgeous, they're big trees, um, but you don't want them to be in, so in a soggy area. You've, you've got to watch, you've got to watch their, um, the culture 
the, the feeding and the and the water on those guys. Um, but they're gorgeous. And then the mule is a brand is not brand new. The mule um, is a new is a new um, palm in our area that's beginning to be grown commercially, and it's a sterile hybrid. It it take they take the pollen from a queen palm, and they put it in a flower of a pindo. And so and I've got a picture coming up here, and the opposite does not make such a good tree. You know, if you take the the pollen from the pindo and put it in a flower of a queen, it doesn't make the same tree. This this hybrid, the mule, is um is, is a new character in town, and I, I think it's going to be a it's going to be a nice one because it's also a pretty hardy palm. It seems to be. So the Washingtonian um, or the Mexican fan palm, um, the, this is how tall it wants to be. And you, you can put it in a yard. Um, this, I got this picture online and this could be California, but um, this palm may just look like a stick growing up with a giant later, or it can just be use it well at this size or any bigger and, and make some changes. But, but it's a, it's a hardy tree when it's in the right place. Um, th these, are, these are a couple of Phoenix Sylvesters. Um, this one's all by itself. This one's in a cluster. Um, this one I, I this one this one's in my yard and I planted it. Um, I planted it before a, a really bad cold, cold um, front came through like three days. I wasn't very good planning. And I really thought that I'd lost it. It was brown for almost two years, and now it's a happy camper. So you know, when sometimes when they get a little shocky, and you may have seen some canary canary island palms, especially around the area, they 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 can look shocky and they can have a hard winter, but they, but generally they'll come back. Um, this is a there's the this is a canary. Um, here in town, or not here in town, though, this is one I got online. I couldn't find one that made me, it wanted to do, but I did, but I did get, this is a picture of its, this is a picture of its, um, its spines, and they're pretty treacherous, so you do have to be careful working with these guys. And this is the mule, and I don't have one of these yet, but it's coming, um, because I, uh, it, it's so pretty, and it's um, looks really tropical, and it's if the cold it doesn't doesn't hate the cold. I don't know if anybody's got any mule stories, um, but uh, I think that they'll I think that it's going to be a successful one in our area. And um, the clo closing up uh, sometimes things don't go right. You know, I mean, I say you got to have success stories, but you got to try things. This one just, this is a windmill. This is what they look like inside when they're not alive. And, uh, but it's gardening. So just try it again in another spot. That's what I say. Okay, and thank you. And any questions that I can help to answer, I'd love to. Thank you very much, Susan. Um, so yeah, we did have a couple questions and we have some of them sitting in oh, the Q&A. I think that, that went we... off because we don't want the dead palm being the last <laughs> Fair enough. So um, let's see. Um, so there's there's a couple that I that are in here that I think would be uh, nice for us to talk about. Um, okay. So uh, one asks. It, it's just like a recommendation. It's um, if if you have a recommendation for like a dwarf palm that gets somewhere between ten to twelve feet tall, that can that does like decent sunlight hours, like four to six hours. Can you think of any, or are they all preferring that full sun? No, um, but um, it's a well, tough. No, no, no. I, well, actually, you know, a win, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that you know, if you wanted, I I didn't really mean to to make the wind windmills are one of my favorites. <laughs> I didn't really mean <laughs> to say don't do those because of the this colder weather. But but you can put a windmill in. At, at a, at a, um, a five or six foot height. What was the tallest height they wanted? About 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's gonna take 10 years to be that tall. Yeah. So, you know, that, that it would be one that you could, you could try. 
Yeah, and I think it would actually do pretty well within those light conditions because I've seen some windmill palms well, growing with it. actually a, like a little bit of um, shade. A little bit of shade. You know, they um, they're grown in the sun, but they but they like a little bit of shade. Yeah. So I did have three questions come up to the presentation that I was waiting towards the end to talk about. Had to do with uh, the boots or the removing of the old, the clasping petioles of the palms, right. um, and um, do you have anything about it? Like I can say what our IPIS recommendations are, but I didn't know if you had any uh, just talking points on it. Well, the, 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 the boots that, that you think of that of coming off, um, that's usually with the sables, right? Is that what the people are asking about? Yeah, because yeah, I mean, sables or some others, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, they, they can be, uh, they can be, they call them slick, you know, or booted, you know, they, people buy them both ways um i kind of like them and letting the boots come off whenever when they want to um a little net more natural but tell me what ifas says so what, what you just said is 100 percent right so um so they're gonna sometimes they're just gonna fall off naturally no problem right. and when they do th th that's no big deal um one of the biggest concerns is isn't necessarily not well if you if you keep them on there, the palm does better with water conservation. It that's doesn't have as much, go, yeah. and it, so that's a benefit of keeping them on there. Um, but if you do remove them, um, the only issue isn't necessarily the removing of it, it's how it's being removed because some of them can be difficult to remove. So sometimes people remove them with chainsaws, which will cause damage to the palm trunk in itself, unintentionally, of course, because it'll scrape the palm. Um, and then that's, that'll be a way to invite pest or disease in. Right, so, it, it seems like if they're not, to me, I would think if they're not, if it takes that much effort to get them off, they're not ready to come off yet. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, yeah, when they're ready, you can just go up and just right. pop them off, right. yeah. <laughs> Now, but now, now the now with the uh, we were talking about uh, those with buteas where they're they they do a, like an artistic trimming. Those are only those are the those are those aren't taking off the boots. Those are the those those uh, stumps I'll call it. They stay on the palm and they and they're dead. But they can be they can be trimmed. Of course, they have to be careful. You're right. We wouldn't want somebody trimming them, trying to make it look artsy and then hurting the palm. But um, mm. Yeah. But hurting, I mean, hurting the trunk. Correct. So, um, so that's our recommendation. So you well, can do it, but that's a drawback. If you do it wrong and you cause damage. Right, right, right. So um, there was one question uh, that we got from um, Ed Bravo. Um, Ed, and Ed's watching this? I know, that's why I said. Yeah, what? no, I'm really. Oh. I, I didn't okay, want to tell Ed, you earlier. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so, um, he, he asked what, and I can help answer this too, like what are, what are the benefits and differences between a regenerated palm and a collected palm? I, I, now, oh, as yeah, a homeowner, no, I, I, yeah. yeah. Yes, I know we didn't, I, mean, I was kind of talking about how to use them in landscaping and stuff. And now the, the regenerated palm, the, the palm is taken from the wild and, um, and, and kept in a, in a nursery setting. Um, until the when they when they harvest them they they cut off almost all the fronds and bundle up the root ball in a small bundle and take it away um, and then when they regenerate them Ed can help me out with this because I don't do the regenerating them but um, maybe two seasons one or two seasons and then they and then they are past they they're re, they're growing their their leaves again and. Um, and they're much less shocky when you when you plant them. Yeah, you know so, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a better success rate. And a lot of a lot of um, palms now are planted as a re, the sables are planted as regenerated. Yeah. So essentially, like I like to put it as a regenerated palm, as a palm that you collect. Like it can sometimes they will come from the wild if you got proper permitting to do so. Mm -hmm. I know people that are landscape contractors and they're working on a demo of a site where they're redoing a landscape. So they take out the old palms that are in those landscapes, they regenerate them. Right. And then they just go back and sell them 
uh, to a client somewhere down the road. So um, yeah, essentially it's just the process of bringing them up to snuff uh, yeah. to meet uh, quote the, the quality codes that we use for like standards for a landscape nursery product. Um, right. I do know sometimes people just collect them and then they'll transplant them. But what you said, that big key word is going through that regeneration process helps with the preparation for transplant because it's a pretty stressful time. So you're getting them kind of rehabilitated before you bring them back into the landscape. Right. So, Ed, I hope that answers your question. <laughs> <laughs> so, cause that's a, that's a pretty good one. That's a really good one that we see a lot on the commercial side. Um, so a couple other ones and we'll just, we'll, we'll work through these, Susan. Um, so some of them would talk about like, and it, there's actually another question that popped up. Um, it had to do with, you know, the, the tap roots. So tap roots essentially are the root systems that are going pretty much just tapping straight down in the ground. They're gonna have some superficial roots. But when you look at a lot of palms, you see that they're planted closely to the infrastructure. So like sidewalks or roadways. Um, and the, one of the biggest reasons we're not seeing damage with that, like compared to say like an oak tree that's next to a sidewalk or a driveway, is that's predominantly because of the type of the root system, correct? Right, right. Most of the, yeah, when, we were to, when I was talking about the tap roots, that was the, uh, the sable miners and the, uh, and the palmettos that want to have that kind of a root. The, the, you know, the other, Oh, the kitty. It's dinner time, so. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, that's, that the, uh, the, uh, mo most of the palms do not, do not grow, uh, that we think of as the palm tree, don't grow those roots that are going to be breaking up the sidewalks. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually going to put a link into the chat box for everybody. Um, cause there was one question about, um, like finding someone that can help do tree work. So I'm going to put in the chat box. It is, oops, make sure I send it to everybody. It is, um, the ISA, so the International Society of Arboriculture, they're the ones that do like all the certifications for arborist. Um, that link that I put into the chat box, that is an online directory where you can find all certified arborists throughout, I mean, any world in the world. Um, so this is a great resource that you can go on to and find those certified arborists that if you're interested in getting proper palm pruning and practices, um, you can reach out to them. So, and it can, and it just gives you a good list of those companies that are certified arborist. So. I don't want to open a can of worms, but did anybody talk about, ask questions about um, the, the um, lethal? No, uh, but we can talk it. about it. <laughs> well, we don't have to talk about it. No, we can't. So, um, the, uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the lethal uh, bronzing, um, which is a, 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 phyto, it's a it's a phytoplasm that, that attacks the trees and, and it's, it's cabbage palms or sables are, are, are the victims of it in our area. And well, not so much in our area, it, but it's happening, you know, and it is something that they're doing a lot of research. Um, it, it's a, it's a, it's spread by, by a, um, by an insect you know, a, a leaf hopper, plant hopper. Yeah. And um, they're, they're working on inoculations. That it's, it's a really big deal at UF because, not so much because it's the state tree, but there are so many of them and they're so prolific in the wild yeah. and they're natives. And they re we really don't wanna see a loss of that tree, you know, yeah. or that, that plant in the, um, in, in the area in Florida. Absolutely. Um, and so, you know, in this area, we don't see it a lot yet. And we're hoping that we don't bring a lot of bugs in that have it. But um, do you have any more insight in any more? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough one. So lethal bronzing was, was, was actually originally called uh, Texas Phoenix Palm Decline because it was isolated specifically to the Phoenix type palms. Right. Yep. Yeah, but then, um, and we first found it in Florida in like the early 2000s, um, 
we're not 100% sure on what the vector source that spreads the disease is, and we don't have a cure for it either. Um, so, but what it did is it mutated, I guess, enough, and it's now infecting a lot more different types of palm species, including the native sable palm. So, um, I can always pull it. We have some fact sheets and stuff. Maybe I'll send that out. When I follow up with this program with everybody registered, I'll send some information about lethal bronzing because you can send off samples to get tested. But um, unfortunately, since there's no cure, the only thing we can really do at this point, if you test positive, you have to take down the tree. But usually by the time that you notice that your tree has lethal bronzing, it's way too late and it'll be dead within a couple days. Right. So, yeah. But, but yeah, um, I'm, I, you know, I just here and there and around, I don't, I don't think it's, we're not seeing a ton of it here yet, but we am hoping, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, we haven't seen it too much. Yeah. yeah, we've seen it, but we haven't seen it too terribly much, think, right. thankfully, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. So, um, so one question we had was, is queen palm fruit edible? Um, I believe it is, but I know some, but I've also heard people say it's not very good. And I've heard other people say it is good. So I don't know anything about queen palm fruit. I, you know, the butea, the, uh, the pindle palm, it's definitely edible. Oh you know? yeah. That's delicious. Yeah, it's, it's good. And it, it, you know, everybody likes it. My dog likes it, but I don't want him to have, want him to have the seeds because they're huge. So, you know, we, we pick them up, you know, we, we, you know, we cut them off before they're dropping everywhere and they, that's that's always an option with the fruit on the palm tree is if you don't want it to drop you can just cut it off before yeah before absolutely um one person asked like uh they have full sun absolute full sun so what's your favorite palm tree for a full sun landscape mm. Now you're, I'm like, well, I've had real good luck with the, um, with the uh, Euro, Euros in the sun. Um, and uh, you know, I, I, I think that the, I, I don't want, I don't want to be, I don't want to be guessing. I mean, I've had, I'm my, uh, in, my Euro that is in the sun, my yard gets a lot of shady at back and forth, you know, um, probably, I'd probably say the Euro, you know, if you really don't get any shade might be a good bet, you know, um, yeah. but I, but I've also, you know, the, the, um, I've, I've, the, the Phoenix, uh, you, the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Phoenix Sylvesters I've seen also in just beautiful installations right in the sun and, they seem to be happy, you know. Wonderful. Um, I, think that, you know, I think that, you know, the sable miners and the, the, the uh, palmettos and the, the needles like a little shade for sure. You know, they're, they're ones that if you, you had, if you had to put them in full, full sun all the time, they might, they might not be as quite as happy. So, um, so we have one person that talk, going back to the fruit that you had uh, one person mentioned uh, as a master gardener training from down in Sumter County. So, um, so Sumter County, was that Norma? I think that's Norma. I can't remember who Sumter County is, but anyways, so, um, but she said that they recommend not eating it. Okay. So that's what they learned from the, the, yeah, but again, they did mention it. I've heard people eating it though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um so um let's see we have a couple coming in still so um this one's kind of interesting it has to do about transplanting um and said i and it says i have several stable palms that i would like to move in my yard how old should they be to move the palms what are the best times to move them Moving sables. Are these are these really large trees, or do they no. say is the person somebody we can talk back and forth with? No. no. Um. <laughs> so because, you know, I mean, if it if they you know obviously they move sables even when they're big out of the forest and then you know reacclimate them and replant them, 
but I've moved some little ones that were coming up in the yard from one spot to the other. Uh, so yeah, you can. Every you time can. of the year, not really picking a time of the year, and they and they moved nicely. A sable. Yeah, so, sable. yeah th there are there are a lot of like the bigger they get. You can transplant them pretty much any time of the year. Usually the cooler mm -hmm. time of year is going to be best uh, because of just water loss. Um, because you need to make sure like right before you transplant it, you need to water the soil all around it to help hold the soil all together in a big root ball and keep it wet until it's transplanted. So um, you don't want it to stay dry because um, a lot of commercial nurseries, they grow field grown palms so you know but they have a special equipment that come in giant tree spades that pick up the entire tree so they can transplant them quickly and easily um, right. so usually the cooler time you can transplant them any time of the year of course but the cooler type of year is gonna be the best for those palms uh just because of that water loss and making sure you have a wet root ball during trans transportation so but if you if it's a big palm and you are a willing worker and you got a good shovel then i mean you can still technically do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a that would be challenging but that yes absolutely um so one last question that we have on here is um christmas palms have lichen um so do you do you have lichen on any of your palm trees and if so how are you treating them Christmas palms have like, oh, oh, someone's Christmas palms have lichen. Mm -hmm. I've never, you know, when I went through the Master Gardener program, I, I was told that lichen was not a problem. Yeah. Is it? Am it, I it, still okay? No, no, you're, you're right. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's benign. So lichen is just going to be something that it's, it's showing that there's moisture, some yeah. moisture, or it's not drying out too quickly. I've had ferns come, you know, and that would be just also probably from the moisture's there. Yeah, so there's there's really nothing wrong with it. When you treat lichen, typically it's just going to be for aesthetic purposes. Okay, that's what that would be my thought. Yeah, I, I typically don't mess with any lichens on the trees. So that's a good question because that's actually a very common question that we get when people reach out to the help desk. They'll see well, lichens on trees. Is it some sort of mold or what's it happening? What's happening? Yeah, yeah. So and and not necessarily the case on the palms, but some of our other trees. When you start to have more lichens or like moss pop up, it's not necessarily the lichen or the moss that's a problem. It could be an indicator of a bigger problem. So it could be like um, the canopy is thinned out, so more mo so more light is getting mm -hmm. in, so pro proliferates mm -hmm. that lichen or moss growth um, and that so that thinning canopy um, that is caused by that's just happening it's not like you went in and pruned out branches right. but um, a thinning canopy could be a sign of maybe some root stress or you know some other damage that's happening to the tree so it's not it's not necessarily a problem child the lichen or the moss but it could indicate depending on it's the type symptom, of yeah. yeah exactly a symptom mm-hmm so but anyways um that is that's all we have that's all we got I, we ran through the questions at the end didn't we susan <laughs> so um before we get going um i want to thank everybody for coming and what one of the things that we do is we have a follow-up survey um i'm going to put that in the chat box now this is a survey that we always do on every single program. It allows us to track our programs to make sure that we're doing that we do them better. Um, and it just helps us out. Um, so feel free that just takes a couple minutes to do um, fill that out so we can track that data. Um, and it's it's in the chat box. And what I'm going to do is t uh, tomorrow or sometime this week, um, I'll try to do it tomorrow is everybody that registered for this event. I'll, we'll send you a link of this webinar because we'll put it up on our YouTube page, um, as well as we'll send you some other resources that are associated with palms that come from UF IFAS extension. But if you have any questions at all, um, always feel free to reach out to the Electric County Extension Office or Master Gardener Volunteer Help Desk. 
um, for any of your landscape questions. And if you are from uh, out of Alachua County, you can always reach out to us anyways. We can always get you connected to what your county extension office is as well. But Susan, I wanna thank you very much for taking the time and uh, putting this presentation together. It was wonderful. Yeah, it was a little scary, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great, thank you.